Hello guys and welcome to part 3, the last part, to know how to mod your or make your own scenarios for Unveil. Now, on this episode we're just gonna see how you can package a scenario uh, overall, how you can prepare it, but also talk about a uh, contiguous map and some other settings that are made for the scenario. So in order to do that, make sure you go to your package root directory and then you open up scenario.json because that is where the magic is. So right here, I'm gonna put it here on the side. You can see you can set all sort of things. On the documentation, you will find this exact same example as well with all the um, explanations and examples and possible values you can set for each. All right, so we'll go through them fairly quickly, but if you need to actually use one of these, then you just check the documentation. It is fairly straightforward. This documentation can be found in unveil.gamepedia.com slash package underscore scenario and of course links in the description below. Now, name is where you set the, uh, the name of the scenario that you will see uh, on the custom scenarios screen all right you're gonna see a list of custom scenarios made by many mothers including including you and your name is gonna show up so this is my scenario that's gonna be can i see but you can do this like adventures of muffin man and that can be the name of the scenario and that, that is actually the name of a scenario so don't take it uh then you get to put the description as you would expect the description that appears on the left side as well as the stats that appear on the left side and you can see how you can set this but pretty much low means low difficulty or high difficulty low or short length or high or lengthy length then of course low resource resources if you put it one or five if you put like a lot of resources and weather one if it's really bad weather five is if it's a really good weather uh, these settings are going from one to five and again you can find all of them right here except for predators that has been disabled anyways then starting position you get to define where you start right now you're starting at map 6 x 22 and y for for uh, 14 so if we go to here we're gonna find map 6 that is correct and then we're gonna have to find x20 uh, 22 and y 14 uh, 14 so that is right here okay that is actually wrong place as you can see so we can actually start like here in the middle of the maze like 15 8 so we can actually change that to 15 x and 8 y and there we go now you may actually want to have different starting positions they can be on the same map or different maps. All you have to do is actually you just take this out. You create an array, array and then you just add many of these, right? You can add like an, on different maps or you can say maybe the same map but in a different location, right? Like, like this, I don't know, right? That's actually how you do it. Otherwise, you can just use this instead. And uh, whoops, okay, there we go. So, um, then we get to set the starting conditions for the scenario. This is really important. This is where you set how much energy you start with from one or zero, I guess, to a hundred. How, how much hydration you start with from one to a hundred. Uh, if you start with one, you're gonna die right away. But anyways, what's the time whenever you start in a 24 uh, clock format, 24 hour clock format? And then what are the weather settings? What's the temperature? What's the soil temperature? What's the wind speed in kilometers per hour? And these are in uh, degrees Celsius, by the way. What's the amount of water in the sky from zero being completely clear to uh, 400 so full that it may be just about to rain. And actually if you put 500, it will pretty much rain right away, right? So stuff like that. Um, soil water, how much water in the soil? Well, if it is below 200 it will look dry but if it's like 350 right it may actually be humid for a day and a half or two and then it will actually be dry until it rains of course so you need to bear that in mind and again all the information about these values can can be found in the documentation now then you have weather mod which are modifications on the simulation so you can actually screw things up badly if you change this 
incorrectly. And you can find all of the settings right here. Um, temperature, sun, heat, and sunlight. So you can create areas that are a little bit more closer to the pole, if you may. Um, you can have it like so that there's day all the time or there's night all the time or for the most part you can change the overall temperature and again this is affecting the simulation so with little sun heat um, maybe not enough water will be vaporized right so you get stuff like that so make sure you don't go crazy on these ones then we have weather injectors this is really interesting this is where you can and again this is explained here and that it actually has an entire page to talk about weather and weather injectors and how they work so i'm just going to give you a quick introduction to them and you're going to learn more if you want to use them uh, make sure you delete this one like just just delete this or just delete this all together or this all together uh if you do not want to use them or you don't know what they're for um, because they can, this can screw you up. So this basically ha creates a playlist, right, of um, weather events or weather injectors like polar winds, heat winds. You can find a list right here, like uh, uh, neutral, tropical weather, rainy weather, polar winds, heat winds, uh, soil dryness, clear sky or rainy. Like in example, clear sky will make sure the sky is always clear, no clouds blocking the sun, but also no rain. Right? But you can make it rainy by using the rainy uh, injector instead. It will try to make the weather go more rainy. That is a nice way to make to change the weather temporarily or permanently without actually having to fill it in with the numbers right here. It's a much safer way because I built them so I know exactly what kind of values they should be using. Uh, you, you can create many playlists, right? Like so, right? These are two separate playlists. One can be immediate, like right after you start the game, or, or another one not, so it starts the day after, right? And within the playlist, you can set the different stuff that can trigger, right? Now, why is it in hash? Well, because you can actually set the duration, and you should, unless you want it to be endless. So you can actually do it like this. Uh, let me check the documentation, but pretty sure it's like... Where is it? Uh, we're gonna find weather injectors. There we go. And uh, playlist, codename, and duration. There we go. So we're just going to use duration and we're going to set two days. All right. Just two days for clear sky. And then we're going to have one day of neutral, which is nothing, just a blank space, right? And this will loop. So after neutral, then two days of clear sky and then one day of neutral. And you can do stuff like that. And then you can have another playlist playing. Uh, uh, at the same time with different uh, injectors so you can do all, all kind of crazy stuff but for the time being just delete it if you do not know what it is now we're gonna get to maps in a second here but first let's go to objectives now you need to have a base objective with at least one uncomplete um, unless you do not want the player to actually complete anything in that case you can just leave this title in blank and leave the task in blank and just and just delete all of these and just put the condition to false and that's it this is what you should copy by the way if you don't want objective objectives to be seen now otherwise you can actually say what the objective is for this scenario and you can set the different tasks and you can have many of these like so right you can just have like three different ones right for the same objective make sure uh, you set the code name for this it can be anything as long as it's not the same to another one right uh, like I, I can have another objective to trigger right after this one even if you can complete the scenario um as long as you play after completed is true you can still play after the scenario is completed that is a thing also in the documentation and you can say i don't know do some more some some code name that is just different to this one so you can reference it later on if you're doing more advanced stuff or you know just for the game to actually uh put them apart that is really it and uh you can you get to set the title for this right like what do you have to do in this scenario uh, i don't know leave the area alive you know something so like that survive uh, seven days that is that is a thing um but of course if you're gonna trigger this manually like you're gonna trigger the uh, success of the scenario manually by reaching a tile or somewhere in, in a map you may actually not want to do that and instead you are gonna you're gonna use uh oh, this one 
scenario challenge completed. That's like this exact same code that you see here. You're just gonna call it from a common event or that's it. Ex if you wanna actually have objectives and so on, you can use this and this is how it works. So you can set the different tasks and each task can have a title. It can have a condition that it needs to meet and this is actually Ruby code right here in JSON. So you can see I'm accessing game progression. It's an object in unveil and I'm accessing what's the day count and it must be equal or greater than seven. Then I have a progress. This is optional, but if you put it in, it will actually display a progress bar below this task. And I'm just calculating it by saying how many hours have I gone through uh, and then I divide it by how many hours there is in seven days, right? So that is pretty much it. That is pretty much it. And then uh, I, you must either set to true or false the condition once. This means that if true, um, once the condition is met, you cannot un unmeet it, right? You cannot uncheck it, right? So in this case, it's impossible, but say one of the conditions is getting an item, right? You, if you are gonna have to use the item, of course, you're gonna lose it. So maybe you can set condition tr uh, once true. So whenever you actually use it, you don't lose it because you already, you know, you already got it, right? So that's it. Uh, and once all of the tasks uh, on uh, an objective are met, then the objective will be sort of marked as completed and it will be discarded and the next one in the list if any is going to be played and the incomplete code is going to be executed right if you want the scenario to just be completed once you complete all the tasks you can call this right and as i mentioned before if you want the player to be able to keep on playing right after uh the scenario is completed you can set this to true so once the scenario, scenario is completed, they can keep on playing. And that is pretty much it. Now, I mentioned that we're, we're gonna talk about maps later. This is the time. So this is where you set the contiguous maps as explained right here. And as you can see, we have map six, which is the only map we have. And then we have a cave, which is uh, ID seven, but caves are not contiguous, all right? They, they, you just go in or out, or you use different gates, right? And they have like weird shapes and sizes. And by the way, bear in mind that the size of the cave does matter. Like don't make it super big uh, like this for no reason, right? If you're not gonna put anything in there because the game uses the surface of a map to calculate how much, uh, what's the size of it uh, and so you know whenever you have a campfire or anything that can warm up the uh, ambient temperature and sorry increase the ambient temperature it's using this size to calculate how quickly and how much you can uh, you know so just make sure there's not a lot of uh, useless um, space around it uh, you can you always use the um, uh, control T uh, or you just right click and then hit shift to move things around if you just have too much space on one side and you need to clear it, you can just move everything to the left or what have you when, by the way whenever you move things to, to the left or right make sure you like if you have an entrance to a cave that's not gonna move so you're gonna if you move things around like if I move it you know two tiles to the right the entrance will still be here it's not gonna move here uh, on the other map because the other map is just an event that that was referencing this place so okay that ma that, that maybe was a little bit too complicated especially if you haven't done much uh, mapping on uh, rpg maker before but anyways you you're, you're gonna find out on your own anyways uh the important thing is how to make maps contiguous well the easiest way that i found is i just take one map and i duplicate it so i'm gonna copy this and i'm gonna paste it here in the scenario right i'm gonna close that in and i'm gonna call this the map on the right pretty 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 straightforward right and uh this is map number eight note that and what what i'm gonna do is actually i'm gonna use the shift tool i'm gonna move everything Two tiles uh, to the right. Two tiles is perfect. A uh, multiple of two actually is perfect because the tiling on the trees is going to remain uh, intact, right? So it feels the same thing. And then I can just do this, right? And I'm, I'm gonna copy all this. Oops, sorry. And I'm gonna extend it all the way. So I can actually see uh, what what the entrance is and then i can just build a map around it right and i can i can do this and I, I, whoops i can do that and i can i can make the player go here and then here and then, then maybe here and so on but it doesn't matter right but the point is that 
this aperture is the same for both maps and actually that that, that looks kind of bad uh, let me let me let me fix that anyways the aperture is the same for the right side of this right and the left side of this so they are equal so you do not get stuck in a tile because maybe you did it offset right so you're gonna appear here where it, which is not sorry here which is not walkable whoops and you know it's gonna not let you walk I did make my own uh, algorithm, so I actually will try to push you away from this, but don't rely on it too much. Try to make the map correctly. So now we have map six that you can go to map eight if you move to the right. How do you connect this? Well, that is what scenario.json is also for in here in maps. So as you can see, I have map six and on the right where it's null right now, I can put map eight that's how you do it you can keep adding like this is like pretty much like an x and y map right and you can just put things on the right i'm gonna add another uh optional like uh, you don't need to do this but like more space right here so you get the idea like i can keep adding more uh to the right or more to the top right i just keep on doing this right so i can like and then i can have like map 10 here and like map 11 here and then map like 12 here and so on so i can go from map 6 to 8 to 10 to 11 to 12 as long as you have the connections right you need to have the connections uh, like open space made right here but as long as you do it this is sort of like the map where you define all that right so that that is pretty cool right it's a very simple way to make two maps adjacent for that to work you need to make sure that all maps are the same size and this is a perfect standard i keep highlighting that make sure they're all uh, of this size if you make them differently at least make sure that all outside contiguous maps have the same size otherwise if you don't do that uh say pretend this scenario is only like um it's only this tall right we're gonna do something like oh man this these controls are like <laughs> let's say this is only this tall right so what's gonna happen is that um whenever you walk from here to the right and you can't do that let's say you can actually do that you're gonna actually appear here in the middle of nowhere there's no actual map i don't even know what's gonna happen i think you're just gonna be seeing like black space uh right um so like well actually it's not like this basically we like this let's do this there we go so that's pretty much it like you're gonna be appearing here it's not even part of the map i don't even know what's gonna happen so make sure yeah you do not make that mistake all right so this is invalid i'm gonna delete it all right i currently have no map to the right so i'm gonna delete that as well so the game doesn't crash well now it's null there we go but that is pretty much it so to wrap it up what you want to do next is um once you're done making your whole scenario you can try it out in the game by the way you can keep trying it once you're done distributing it what you need to do is maybe make a copy of this package right you can just duplicate it you can um maybe i don't know take this folder right the folder and just take it like somewhere else like your desktop what have you right and in here we're gonna uh go to scenario and we're gonna delete everything but data and maps all right and we just delete it why well because there is like 200 megabytes in graphics and crap we don't need it's going to make it so big to transfer for no reason it's gotta be optimal you know so uh that way i know there's more crap here you could delete like this and like this and technically speaking all maps between one and five because they're not used so that is a thing as well but that is optional you do not need to delete the contents of data that that's silly uh that they don't really wait that much and just it is just added work but make sure you delete uh everything else so it's not as heavy and uh you leave only data and maps which yeah maps are the ones that contain the configuration for your uh maps by the way zero.json is just a template you can delete that as well all right, but you can do it on a separate package so you can keep editing it. You need the RPG Maker project and all the files so you can actually uh, make your own stuff, all right? So uh, that is, I'm gonna delete this, but you get the idea. So that is pretty much it. That is how you make a custom scenario in Unveil. If you wanna just, you know, create your own, your own events, you can still do that. That is still the same. Um, just bear in mind that uh, whenever you wanna use one of these, like, the event commands and so on 
there are many things that won't work like or, or just are not meant to work like change the hp the mp that this is not part of the game change state that is not actually how you do it either so uh, in case you want to find out how to use many of this in package maps there's a list at the bottom as you can see no not package maps where is it package Oof, man i i I was pretty confident it was maps, but now I'm having second thoughts. Uh, I think it was... Well, my mouse just died, which is great. Uh, modding, let's go to modding. Uh, there we go. And in modding, we'll, we're gonna find more information about what you can and can't do, and some more information about existing objects in Unveil. But the reading of can and cannot do uh, will tell you everything that you can and can't do in the mod editor, as well as the page one two and three of the visual editor why they work what stuff sorry doesn't work or do it works differently or there is a different way to do it in unveil i know it may sound overwhelming but really it's not that big of a deal and most of the stuff are not stuff you're expecting to use anywhere so like anyways like the class the skills the level the gold stuff that are not in the game right um and you know music and stuff like you're not supposed to manage in unveil or battle processing for the most part you're gonna be fine but make sure you check this list there may be something you want to use like common event uh there's a there are different ways to do it uh scrolling text i don't know if it works key item should not work you get the idea anyways besides that that is pretty much it uh, make sure you either use github or something something like that to share your stuff uh especially if you want other people to um to modify your work but github is still great to share um you know just code overall so that that is just my recommendation but that is all for this uh tutorial make sure you check back for tutorials on on uh, modifying other other aspects of uh, unveil i'm really sorry about that um so that is all thank you for watching and i will see you next time